Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's Coffee Break. Uh, today we have Scott with us from RM Manifold to talk about stairwell pressurization. Go for it, Scott. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, as Brandon said, my name is Scott Blackman. I'm the National Sales Manager for RM Manifold Group. RM Manifold Group is a pressure-based controls company based out of Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, we go to market under several different brands. Uh, U.S. Draftco handles boilers, water heaters, pool heaters. Uh, we do the exhaust and supply air systems for those. LF Systems is kind of the air component. We're going to talk about one of those components today. Uh, they do commercial laundry rooms. We also do high-rise multifamily exhaust uh, and then stairwell and elevator hoistway pressurization. Uh, and then a KW is a partnership with a German company, and we do pizza oven and fireplace fans. So when we talk about stairwell pressurization, what are the goals of stairwell pressurization? Well, obviously to protect life and property and basically to create a tenable environment for someone to exit a, a burning building uh, in case of an emergency. All of this kind of started from the MGM Grand Fire back in the 1980s, uh, or 1980 actually. Uh, it was a small fire, it happened in a deli on the first floor. It uh, was put out relatively quickly, but due to a lot of design uh, flaws, in the building, uh, over 60 people died in the stairwell, all due to smoke inhalation. Um, and if you're ever interested in looking in that further, you can go on YouTube and if NFPA actually has an entire video kind of showing they kind of detailed out what occurred and how it occurred. More recently, back in uh, January of 22, we had a 19 story uh, 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 complex in the Bronx and 17 people died in it, 63 were injured, all due to smoke inhalation. Uh, again, nothing with the fire, uh, but they did not have proper stairwell pressurization uh, in the building, and uh, like I said, it was a tragedy because uh, 17 people died. We kind of take our, all of our definitions and our terms and our, our, our standards from ASHRAE, from NFPA 92, uh, we also UL 864, and IBC section 909. Uh, a couple of Definitions you'll see in here is obviously CONTAM, that's going to be your building smoke study software. Your FSCS is your fireman smoke control station. A high-rise building, according to NFPA, is 75 feet or more, uh, but that can be lowered uh, via the jurisdiction. So uh, say in Dallas, uh, it's actually 55 feet. Uh, stack effect is going to be your vertical uh, airflow movement through a building, uh, just natural airflow movement. And then a tall building, according to ASHRAE, is 300 feet or more. There's, according to NFPA, there's two different methods for doing stairwell containment. Uh, the first is a passive uh, smoke control system. Uh, that's going to be what you see in your, you know, your little three and four story hotel, you know, like Holiday Inns, things like that, uh, where you're just relying on doors to open and close and hopefully maintain a reasonable uh, environment inside a stairwell to, uh, to escape. However, the other side is active systems. So that's where it in, uh, uses supply fans. We use dampers and controls uh, to actually supply air into the stairwell to pressurize the stairwell. NFPA gives us two system types. They give us a single point injection type. Uh, they allow the single point injection up to 100 feet. And the single point injection is exactly what it is. You have a single point of injection of air into the stairwell. So uh, it's, it's air entered and introduced at a single point. The other type and the type that NFPA really recommends is a multi-point injection system. And that's where you have a duct either running adjacent to or inside the stairwell, and it ejects air at multiple points in that stairwell. NFPA recommends that you do an injection point every floor, but they realize that that's not always the, uh, the easiest or the best thing to do, so they allow you up to every three floors for an injection point. NFPA says, hey, you can use any fan you want. You can put that fan anywhere you want. Uh, in uh, cases of buildings under 100 feet, you're even allowed to use a propeller fan. However, that propeller fan, they, they kind of uh, discourage it without fully saying don't use it. Uh, they say you've got to do windshields and weather guards and, oh, by the way, you're going to get a lot of CFM and not a lot of static pressure. So they really push towards centrifugal or vein axial fans uh, for that use. Uh, same way with multi-point injection. Again, you can use uh, a fan on the roof, a fan on the ground, halfway up in between. Uh, in really tall buildings, say 30, 40, 50 stories, you might see something like this where they zone off uh, maybe 10 or 12 stories and sit there and uh, actually use smaller fans for each of those zones instead of relying on one large fan to do the entire job. 
NFPA lists three different system control types. Uh, the first is kind of a non-compensated system, and that's just basically a blow-and-go system. The fan sits in the, the fan. It's a single-speed fan. It just sits there and injects air in uh, to the stairwell, and they rely on doors opening and closing to kind of relieve the pressure in the system. Uh, the second is kind of a compensated system. That's where you can actually start to vary the uh, the flow of the fan or maybe use a, uh, a backdraft damper or something like that to uh, barometric damper to allow uh, pressure changes. And then compensated system with modulating supply air is where we play. And that's actually where you modulate that fan to go up to down, you know, ramp up and down and react to those pressure spikes inside that stairwell. So when we look at uh, IBC and we look at UL 864, IBC um, 909, uh, 2018 and beyond directly uh, call out UL 864. Before they had kind of mentioned it, said, hey, you know, you really need to do this. Now, 2018 and beyond have said, hey, uh, any system that is doing smoke uh, control must comply with UL 864. Uh, when we look at UL 864, it actually spells out kind of what, uh, what you need. So it, it, it not only says, hey, yes, the equipment needs to be listed to these standards, but the programming needs to be listed as well. Um, so what does that mean? So everything inside this blue box is supposed to be listed to UL 864. Uh, that includes any kind of point logic controller. So a VFD is a motor controller typically and is allowed is not it does not have to be necessarily UL 864 compliant. However, anytime you take that VFD and you hook it up to a couple of pressure sensors, you know, and start and write a program and run an average off of that VFD, that VFD now becomes a point logic controller and it now needs to be listed to UL-864, the um, uh, programming needs to be listed to UL-864. So that's something to keep in mind, especially if, as cities are adopting 2018 and beyond for the IBC. So what did we do? So we took our expertise in PID loop control that we've been doing for boilers and water heaters and laundry systems for years. Uh, we paired it with fast acting uh, relief damper actuators and created a dedicated point logic controller that basically is a plug and play package that can go on that can pair with any fan out there on the market as long as it's rated for smoke control. And what we created was the active compensated stairwell pressurization system. I dare you to say that 10 times fast. So we just call it the ACSP for short. And basically it's everything you see here. So it's the L864 controller. It's three pressure transducers. It's a VFD uh, and a relief damper actuator if needed. And it is actually an entire, like I said, plug and play package. So now there's no going back and forth, writing sequence of operations, going back and forth with controls contractors. Uh, it's an entire package. All of the system has been tested together. It's all been listed together. The programming's been listed together. Um, and it's a very simple, it's a very simple install. So we use three pressure transducers. We put those kind of high, medium, and low in the stairwell. Uh, our uh, L864 is located somewhere near the FSCS, usually in the fireman's closet. Uh, and then our VFD is controlling that fan. Um, when we size these stairwells, we want to size these stairwells for about a 0.1. We usually shoot between a 0.08 and a 0.12. Uh, you definitely do not want to go above a 0.3. A 0.3 is kind of where that will, those doors will start to fail the, uh, the door pull test. So uh, the great thing about our system is it doesn't matter when you commission it, uh, you, you know, you're going to maintain pressure. So no matter what kind of stack effect you've got going on, uh, you know, God forbid in a fire situation, our system is going to maintain the pressure level that uh, needs to be in the stairwell. The L864 controller uh, is basically a uh, controller with a seven inch touchscreen. Uh, it's got dedicated IOs for the FSCS and the, uh, the manual pull. Um, and basically, like I said, maintains pressure. So you can go in here, it's fully fill programmable. Once all your door sweeps are set and the doors are set in the stairwell, you can set your pressures uh, that you want on those pressure transducers, and this will maintain, uh, maintain pressure in the stairwell. Now, once we get a build buildings probably in the Denver area, you know, Colorado area above about uh, 10 or 11 feet, uh, sorry, 10 or 11 stories, uh, we might have to move to an advanced system. So an advanced system is basically the same as the uh, ACSP, except it adds the L850 controllers and uh, some more pressure transducers. And the way this kind of looks laid out into the system is you would have the L864 
maintaining pressure inside the duct. So this is going to be for buildings obviously over 100 feet or buildings that are using a multi-point injection system. You would have that L864 maintaining pressure inside that duct. And then you would have an L850 and an injection point damper at each of the injection points. So you remember that I said earlier, NFPA allows you up to three floors per injection point. Well, with the 850 controller and injection point damper, we can now put a pressure transducer on the floor above the injection point and the floor below the injection point and actually zone out that stairwell in every three floors. And you can actually get a true pressure reading on every three floors all the way up and down the building. The L850 controller, like I said, is a, it's basically a standalone injection point controller. Uh, it mounts inside the stairwell for tall buildings. Uh, again, comes with two pressure transducers, allows you to uh, allows the you to control the uh, injection point damper. Again, uh, we use a two second actuator. Uh, it's one of the fastest on the market. It's proprietary to us. Uh, it's two seconds fully opened and fully closed. Uh, it will modulate. Um, so. A great option. We we recommend uh, opposed blade dampers for that precise air control. Here new for 2023, we actually released elevator hoistway pressurization system. So again, uh, pretty much identical to the uh, stairwell uh, pressurization. Uh, again, the controller handles all of the pressure transducers uh, inside the elevator hoistway. It uh, again controls the uh, VFD for the fan and also monitors the fire smoke damper fire uh, fire detector for the fan we have a little cheat sheet that we use uh, here we actually have a, an entire uh, engineering team on staff at uh, rm manifold that we are more than willing to help you guys uh, do uh, calculations uh, do layouts things of that nature um, we use this little cheat sheet it is available to you guys if you just reach out to your salesman at long we can uh, sit there and kind of you can kind of calculate out what kind of building size you have, uh, what is kind of recommended. It'll kind of give you a an idea of the stack effect uh, as long as you put in the correct temperature uh, parameters. Again, like I said, we have an engineering team on staff, so we help with all the fan scheduling. But uh, if you'll notice here, uh, you would select your fan, select your CFM, and basically our package is kind of the controls package that goes with that fan in the notes. Uh, and again, our, our team will help with that. Our engineering team will provide full wiring diagrams and, uh, you know, system operation diagrams uh, for you to add to your plans and your systems. We will also do um, written specifications. So uh, anytime you have a um, need for this, please feel free to reach out to your salesman and we will uh, be more than willing to help you. And with that, that's all I've got. Perfect. Well, thank you, Scott. Do you mind going to the last slide? Uh, and next week, Joshua Lice will be presenting Netterman filtrations. Thank you all for joining us this week, and we'll see you next week.